Continuing with our breaking news coverage, former President Trump is expected to clinch the Republican nomination within the next few hours, just a short time after President Biden clinched his nomination tonight. That comes as Eric Kristen Holmes reported earlier that the former president is expecting to use his court appearances in the upcoming Stormy Daniels hush money trial as an opportunity to campaign. I'm joined now by New York Times senior political correspondent Maggie Haberman. It's interesting, this idea of using the court appearances as a way to stay active on the campaign trail. I mean, both just from a practical standpoint, it makes sense, but it has also been effective for him thus far. It's been what he has done this entire time. He did it through the primary cycle to great effect. Now, I would argue that legally, his performances in court during the E. Jean Carroll trial and during the New York AG trial did not go particularly well for him in terms of the, the judgments that came down, but uh, they certainly created a lot of noise and a sense of motion as he was in these primaries in the final stages. And this is what that will be, especially because He's going to be in court four days a week. Wednesdays will be a break. So the only days that he can really campaign are Saturday and Sunday. And yet he knows that so many cameras are going to be at the courthouse and there's not videotape inside the courtroom. So they'll need to occupy their time talking about stuff. So his appearances there will get tremendous pickup. That's exactly right. And this is something that, you know, we had expected was going to happen and may still happen if there's a federal January 6th related trial where there won't be cameras in the courtroom. There, as you say, won't be cameras in the courtroom for the Bragg trial. And so Trump will go out and he'll give his spin and he'll say whatever he's going to say. And, and he's going to hope that he's going to drown out whatever the witness testimony is and whatever damaging evidence is offered in the case. Is he trying to, I mean, in terms of campaign strategy, to build his base? Is he trying to just pick away uh, some black voters from President Biden, Hispanic voters, whomever he can get? I don't think that's what uh, he's doing in this upcoming court case. I don't think that's the target. I think the target is essentially survival, to be honest. And I think his aides are hoping uh, that he does not do himself damage because, as we have seen in recent days, he is saying things that are not helping him. It's not like it's always a net plus when he talks. But in general, it is true that part of their math is they are trying to make uh, a play for black voters. He's been very explicit about it. He also has been trafficking in all kinds of racial stereotypes as he does it, but he refers back to his record as president. Even if he doesn't pick up those votes, even if the public polling showing him getting uh, a much higher percentage of black voters is wrong, part of the strategy is just peeling it away from Biden, either so people stay home or toward a, uh, an independent candidate. It is also just bizarre. You think about uh, John Kelly telling Jim Schuto about the Hitler comments and, you know, Hitler did some good things, uh, according to John Kelly. The, the, that's what the former president said. It does, nobody seems to care. I mean, in, in any other time, this would have been just uh, unbelievable. There's a, an enormous, vol for a couple of things I would say about that. There's been an enormous volume of information about uh, things that Donald Trump said as president, things that he said in his past. Um, we have uh, talked about it here. Uh, we've written about it at the New York Times. Uh, that that piece of information actually first uh, appeared in a, in a book by my colleague, Mike Bender. Mm. And so some of these things have been around so long that I actually think that the public has gotten almost numb to them. Mm. And, and I think that that is... For, for people who don't like the former president, that is part of their challenge. If you look back at the reporting around the Mueller report, and we wrote about this at the time, there was so much reporting that went into uh, this investigation and what was happening with that investigation that the public sort of heard a lot of it along the way. So by the time the actual report came out, there wasn't a ton new that the public was learning. A and that seems to be the case here. I think the public has tuned a lot of it out. They may not in the fall, and I think that's what we're going to What do you make of the see. big fire mass firings of the RNC under with Larry Trump? Uh, unsurprising, uh, and I think it's really mostly under Chris Lasavita, who has come in as, you know, he's a, a top Trump campaign official, and he's the the de facto chief of staff now at the RNC. Unsurprising because there's bloat there? or Unsurprising because they have been um, telegraphing that this was coming for some time. Uh, I think there is not a lot of happiness around some of the celebrating that was going on by some folks uh, on the Trump campaign about it. And it's a, it's a strange message to cheer people getting fired, but mm -hmm. especially when you are trying to win over more votes. Uh, but Look, we will see if it makes a difference. We will see if they end up hiring some of these folks back. We will see what the RNC ends up looking like. But it's not a surprise to see this mass shakeup. Maggie Haberman, thanks so much. Thank you. Caitlin? Anderson, Donald Trump and President Biden both winning Georgia in their respective primaries tonight. It's a state that is going, expected to be at least, a critical state again this November. In 2020, Biden defeated Trump there by fewer than 12,000 votes. CNN's Gary Tuckman is in Atlanta tonight with a group of undecided voters who could help swing this election. Gary, how are they feeling about their two choices now that it's in clear view tonight? Well, Caitlin, what I will tell you is when it comes to presidential elections, it's hard to find undecided voters. But 
They can be found, and we have found them here in Atlanta, Georgia. This is a very important swing state, Georgia. Six voters. And since I've met you all and talked to you yesterday and today, has anyone changed their mind? Is anyone ready to vote for Trump or Biden for sure? No. Okay, hands are down. So let me start asking you. First, we have here Devani and Kashyap, wife and husband. You're not ready to vote for either of these two. No. Why don't you like Joe Biden for president? Um, it's the hardest job in the world. It's the hardest job in the world. And we keep hearing stories about how he's so sharp, he's so on point behind closed doors. But I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. And Kashyap, why don't you like Donald Trump? Well, I mean, I just don't think he's a good human being. And just the things that come out of his mouth makes me cringe every time. And um, not to mention all the indictments against him. So you're both independents. Might you not vote in the election in November? Unless they give us a compelling reason uh, to change our mind. Scott, you're an independent. You told me that you're kind of a libertarian. You're fiscally conservative, but socially you're progressive. Do you like either of these two gentlemen for president? I, could there be two worse options? Right. You know, Biden is weak in all the wrong areas. Trump is a polarizing salesman, not a statesman. We need better. So might you not vote? No, I, there are too many reasons to go and exercise my right to vote. So I will vote. Who will you vote for? I don't know right now. All right. Um, considering going third party, I think. So uh, who would that be? I think Kennedy has a lot to offer. So R RFK Jr. Okay, yeah. let me ask you, Deanna. You are a Democrat. Yes. But you were telling me that you wanted Nikki Haley. And yes, I, I think over Trump, she just seemed like she was for the people versus, you know, Trump, who I feel like is after his own personal vendetta. And now that she's out, is there any chance you'll vote for either of these two gentlemen? Currently, no. I'm undecided. So mm -hmm. does that mean you won't vote in the election in November? I may not. You may not vote. I may not. Okay, Delancey, you're an independent. You also like Haley. And you told me you voted for Democrats and Republicans in the past. What do you think of these two candidates, the president and the former president? Well, I'm not a Trump fan, I'll be honest. But um, I like Biden. I think he's a good guy. I think he's too old right now. I think he's just his, his time has passed. And I also think both candidates are so polarizing that it's hard for our country to get behind anyone. So, so might you vote for Joe Biden? If there's not a good third party candidate, yes. So you're looking for a third party candidate. Who might that be? Um, well, one person that I don't think wants to do it, but is Governor Kemp, because I see him Georgia's as, governor. Yes, because I see him as someone who stood up to Trump and is still popular and, and well liked. OK, well, it doesn't look like he's running. So the, the final person we have here is Lou. And I should tell all our viewers that Lou and I are friends. We went to eighth grade together in high school. When we were in high school, Jimmy Carter was beating Gerald Ford. <laughs> but I can tell you, we've never talked about politics in all these Ever. years. Ever. Until the other day when I found out that you were undecided. Yeah. Now, you mm -hmm. told me you, you know you're not going to vote for Biden. You're an independent. Correct. But you don't like Trump very much either. And you like Nikki Haley also. So I what do. are you going to do? I do. I really like Nikki Haley. And I'm so sure, sorry she, she dropped out of the race. I thought she was sharp. I thought she... Um, uh, really had all the elements of what I look for in a president. But might you vote for Trump? Probably will. No, yeah. What about third party? Uh, if there was a great candidate that came in, yeah. But at this point, I don't know if that's going to happen. And um, yeah, I would probably vote for him because I think he can execute on the things that are important to me. I want to ask you all, if this makes you sad, as a, as a patriot of this country, you all love your country. That's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to all of you. I asked you all how much you love this country, and you all love it. Does it make you sad that you're not really digging these Republican and Democratic candidates for president? Absolutely. Yeah, I know when we spoke, I was saying that since I've become of age to vote, this is the first time that I, I really don't know. This is the first time I feel motivated to just stay home. Well, what I want to tell you is your vote is going to be sought because you're from Georgia. It'll be sought big time. Thank you all for joining us.